What is going on out there folks? My name is Ray and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to clean a driveway like a boss. So check it out. Okay so as soon as we pull up what I like to do after we get our cones and everything out we'll go ahead and do a quick little property walk and that's where we just kind of walk the property look at the job and see what all we're gonna have to bring to the table to get the desired results that we want for our customers. So let's go ahead and do that first. All right, so the first thing we're gonna notice here when we do our property walk is that this driveway has a lot of algae on here. So we know we're gonna have to pre-treat this with sodium hypochlorite, which is the algicide that we like to use in order to remove algae. If we don't pre-treat this concrete, then what'll happen is when we start surface cleaning, it's gonna leave a lot of swirlies and a lot of lines in the driveway, and it's not gonna, going to leave a good result for our customers. So. Well, you can recognize we're gonna to need to pre-treat this concrete. Also here, we notice the oil stain, so that means we're gonna to have to use some degreaser and put some degreaser down and pre-treat that before we start the surface cleaning. Uh, also here, we notice some damage, some cracking in this driveway, so I'm just gonna go ahead and boom, snap a picture of that. That way we have our protection in case the customer comes at us and says, hey, this wasn't like this before, or it's worse. Some more oil staining and things like that. So now that we've done this property walk of the job, we have the information that we need in order to uh, plan our work and work our plan. So let's go ahead and get everything hooked up and get started. A couple quick little tips right here. So for one, the garden hose that was on the customer's spigot here is on too tight. So I need a wrench to be able to get that off. I uh, really, really love this tool. It's called a goat wrench, G-O-A-T. And I used to use this when I built power lines, but it's got the grooves on there. So you never have to adjust it and it'll fit all the way from like a, a quarter inch all the way up to like a three quarter inch screw. So I like to keep that on the truck to break those loose. It works out pretty good. The second tip I want to give you really fast is on a garden hose. When you do decide to buy one, I like the Flexzilla hose. Uh, you can find them with and without this, but if you can, if you get one, get the one that has this little uh, twister on the knob there. It really helps out getting that hose on and off. All right, so now while our water tank is filling up, before we get started on this, let's talk about surface cleaners for a second. Now, what I have here is a 24 inch whisper wash surface cleaner and on hand I also have a 20 inch surface cleaner. Now the only thing that the inches means is this bar that's underneath. So we'll flip over this 24 inch and take a look at exactly how this thing works. <clears throat> so you can see here this 24 inch surface cleaner has a 24 inch bar on here and this is a four tip bar so it has four tips in there. I actually plugged two of them with plugs and I'm just running two tips on it because I actually like the two tip better than the four tip. So from now on, I'm only buying the two, the two tip bars. So it's just an option. It's kind of a Ford versus Chevy type of thing, but that's basically the gist of how the surface cleaner works. Now, how do you know what size surface cleaner you need for the machine that you have? A general rule of thumb is for every gallon per minute that your machine puts out, you want to have four inches of bar. So for every four inches of surface cleaner that you have, you need to have one gallon a minute on your machine. What I'm running here is an eight gallon a minute machine with a 24 inch surface cleaner. So that theoretically means I should have at least a six gallon a minute machine pushing this surface cleaner. Now, if you end up having too much force, like when you fire your machine up and you plug your surface cleaner up, if this thing it starts wanting to fly off the ground like a, like a UFO, then that means you're gonna have to up the size of the tips that goes in the surface cleaner. Um, the first two numbers, when you look on a tip, let's flip this back over for one second. The first two numbers that you see on the tip are gonna be the degrees that it's spraying out. The next two numbers are gonna be the gallons per minute. So you can see here, I'm not sure if you can see the numbers, but it's a 25 degree tip and it says zero four, which means four gallons a minute. So I'm running two four gallon a minute tips, which matches up to my eight gallons a minute that I'm putting out on my machine. So you wanna match your tips to the machine that you're running. 
If you want more pressure, obviously reduce the tip size based on the machine that you're running. But that's the gist of how you pair up the machine to the surface cleaner you're using to get the desired result. The next thing I want to talk about is what chemicals should we use? What brand names? And that is going to be a personal preference. There's tons of different detergents and solutions out there. So you can pretty much pick the choice of whatever you like. So on this particular job, we're just going to be using good old sodium hypochlorite, what we have in our tank over here. We'll be using our booster pump to pre-treat this through the soft wash system, firing that up, laying down the pre-treatment, and then on the oil stains that we saw earlier, I'm going to be using some hot stain remover from EcoChem to put down on those. I like uh, hot stain remover really well. It works good for us. I have heard of some other ones that work well. So again, it just depends on your personal preference. Now, how strong should we mix those chemicals? For oil stains, anywhere from a 50-50% mix, 50% water, 50% degreaser put on there. But if it's a really bad stain, you may have to even go full strength with the degreaser. As far as the algae and getting rid of the mold and mildew off of the driveway, when we apply our sodium hypochlorite for driveways, you got to keep a couple things in mind. One is vegetation. If there's a lot of really plush vegetation on the property, which there's not here, but say you got flower beds and you, the runoff is going to be going to places where there's plants and things of that nature, uh, you want to really watch the strength that you're putting down. So here we can kind of get away with a little bit of a hotter mix to, to make the results pop better for our customer. So with a job like this, I'm going to lay around a two to somewhere between a two and a 3% mix of sodium hypochlorite down on this for a pre-treatment before we start surface cleaning. So let's go ahead and get that started. All right, now as you can see, just from laying down that pre-treatment, it has drastically improved the look of the concrete here. So this is really what sets the boys apart from the men when it comes to cleaning driveways and surface cleaning. Laying down that good pre-treatment will disturb and start to eat into that algae and allow it to come up a lot easier, which is going to help you not put lines and streak marks and leave an unprofessional result for your customers. So, uh, for me, it's a must do, especially on concrete that's dirty. The only time you really wouldn't want to put a pre-treatment down is when the concrete is fairly new and it hasn't cured long enough. Then obviously you wouldn't want to lay down any chemicals because it would be pointless. So anyway, let's go ahead and grab our degreaser and we're going to spray a little bit of that down. A couple tips on safety is to always make sure you're wearing a respirator whenever you're applying uh, sodium hypochlorite or any caustics or acids you want to make sure you have the acid vapor cartridges in there so otherwise uh, it won't be blocking the vapors but uh anyhow so we've got our degreaser and the pump up sprayer another really quick tip is when you start mixing up your degreasers and your oxidation removal products your acids uh, i like to color code them so i know like yellow is degreaser for me red is acid and uh, green is, is for gutter brightening. So I like to color code those to try to prevent any mix up because if you start mixing products, you can cause an explosion. Uh, people have died from that and it's not good at all. So another thing is whenever you bring chemicals on, you wanna keep in the back of your truck an SDS book with SDS sheets for each detergent that you have because if a DOT man pulls you over and you don't have those SDS sheets, you could be paying a hefty fine all the way up to $10,000. So get those SDS sheets. 
Okay, so we've got our solution to detergents all down and applied to the driveway here. So the next step is to go ahead and fire the machine up, pull out our high pressure hose, hook up to the surface cleaner, and start cleaning this driveway here. Now you may have noticed that on the soft wash system, I didn't switch over to flush out the pump yet. I didn't rinse out. So there's still solution in that 250 feet. Just got done surface cleaning and I'm checking out all the oil stains and I'm seeing that they came up really, really good. So I'm not even going to have to crank up the hot water unit and put any uh, hot water down on there to get rid of those. So now that we've got everything surface cleaned, we're going to disconnect the surface cleaner and use the ball valve cut halfway open to rinse all this off before we check out the results and see wh whether or not we need to post treat this. So let's get it. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at this driveway and check out these results. Now, everything turned out really, really good. All that algae and organic stuff is off of the driveway. The surface cleaning did a great job. Uh, you can kind of see here, this will give you a little bit of an idea of a before and after. Now, 
you can see here, humongous difference from that to that. So I believe that this customer is gonna be very happy, but what I like to keep that soft wash hose filled up with the sodium hypochlorite is for when I'm rinsing that pump out, I can come back on this driveway and if I notice any noticeable lines or impurities in the, in the cleaning here, I can use that what's left in the hose to come out and post treat just those areas so I can spot treat the areas that are rough. You don't really need to come back and put a post treatment on clean concrete because there's really no point in it. But um, it will help to go back and maybe hit little edges, places where you couldn't get the surface cleaner in tight and things of that nature in the cracks and stuff like that. So we'll go ahead and do that and then we'll have this job wrapped up. All right, so we used what was left in that soft wash hose to post treat the little small areas and little impurities and the driveway came out phenomenal. Now normally I would have cleaned that walkway just to add value to try to get a repeat customer out of the deal. But this was just for a builder that actually spilled some oil and was trying to make it right with their customers. So we're doing exactly what they asked us to, which was strictly the driveway only. And yeah, we're gonna wrap it up and get the hell out of here and get on to the next one. Hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please hit me with a like and subscribe down below. And as always, keep on hustling, keep on grinding and shining like a diamond. We'll check you later, peace.